of our whole years and our lives. We make a miracle work, a promise keep a light in the darkness. Oh, sweet St. Martin's land, so bright by beach and strand, with sailors on the sea in harbors free. Where the chains of mountain green variously in sunlight sheen. Oh, I love thy paradise, nature's beauty fairly nice. Oh, I love thy paradise, nature's beauty fairly nice. How pretty between all green, fanboy and beam and gleam, a flower's red by sunlight set, thy cow and sheep and goat in meadows all on road, thy donkey's keen, I can't forget. Oh, sweet St. Martin's land, so bright by beach and strand, with sailors on the sea in harbors free, where the chains of mountain green variously in sunlight sheen. Oh, I love thy paradise, nation's beauty fairly nice. Oh, I love thy paradise, nature's beauty fairly nice. In First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18, we are encouraged in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So there's no doubt that we're gathered here because it is God's will that we meet here and celebrate and give him thanks for what he has done. In saying welcome, I say welcome to the Honorable President of Parliament, Mrs. Sarah Westcott Williams, the Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. William Marlin and Mrs. Marlin, the High Council of State, the Honorable Council of Ministers, which include present Mr. Emil Lee, Mr. Richard Gibson, Ms. Silvera Jacobs. Members of Parliament, members of clergy, invited guests, and in case you have not yet been welcome, all other persons in attendance. It is interesting when we listen to some of the tunes here this evening one of them that I thought was very appropriate and fitting was one that the harmonics sang towards the end and I think it is appropriate if we before my remarks if you all would join in us repeating the song that they sang earlier today. Thanks, thanks, we give you thanks. Thanks, thanks, 
we give you thanks for all you have done. We are so blessed, our soul has been trust. Oh Lord, we give you thanks. Thanks, thanks, we give you thanks. has found rest oh lord we give you thanks thank you i know you don't mean it fellow St. martiners residents of our beloved island brothers and sisters all present Good afternoon. That song has been ringing in my head all afternoon, actually. And you might say, why? But let me turn the question around and ask, why not? Just look across our region and tell me what you have seen the past months. Over 1,000 dead as Hurricane Machu tore into Haiti. 1,000 human souls lost in one catastrophic storm. We may not be able to comprehend what that means. However, however there, but for the grace of God goes St. Martin. Machu may have spared the Dominican Republic, but the torrential rains didn't. The rains ravaged the northern part of that country recently, resulting in over 2,000 homes destroyed and thousands of people evacuated by force as the government there declared a state of emergency. There again, but for the grace of God, goes St. Martin. Even in Aruba and Curaçao, where the natural disasters of this magnitude have been very rare, the rains have also wreaked, wreaked havoc there just a few mornings ago. But we've had rains here in St. Martin too, but not with similar devastating effect. Take a quick look around the world and tell me what you have seen. A major earthquake, earthquake in Japan with threats of a tsunami and the list goes on and on. This is not to beat our chest and think we have done something to deserve God's mercy upon us. But given all of this, I ask you, does St. Martin have reason to give thanks? Do we have any reason to give thanks with grateful hearts? Oh yes. 18 years ago, when the faith community on this island came together with government to establish St. Martin's own thanks day of thanksgiving, it was mainly in response to a series of devastating hurricanes that pounded the island for four consecutive years, starting with, all, with what we all can recall, Hurricane Luis in 1995. It was common at the time for many on the island to say we had deviated from the ways of the Lord, and that was why we were being punished. But no matter what mess we were in, God came through for us and showed us that there was a message in that mess. And that message was that the storms were not sent to break us, but to make us realize that the gift of life is priceless. 18 years 
may not seem such a long time for some people, but it is the age of maturity. A child born 18 years ago would have been able to vote this year. I know some of you might say, there he goes trying to play politics. But let me put your fears to rest. It is one of the prayers I would like to offer as our celebration comes of age on this Thanksgiving Day, a prayer for stability in government so that we won't have snap elections again and that the next elections will be held in 2020. Our people deserve that as a thankful people. Someone once wrote, and I quote, thankfulness is the beginning of gratitude. Gratitude is the completion of thankfulness. Thankfulness may consist merely of words. Gratitude is shown in acts. In this regard, I believe we have a great lesson to learn from the Holy Bible book, which in the parable of the 10 lepers teaches us about gratitude. Jesus had healed 10 lepers who called out to him from afar to cleanse them. But only one of the 10 returned to thank him, and that one was a Samaritan, a foreigner. I'm not going to give you a sermon on this. I'll leave that to the inspired wisdom of our clergy. But I want to highlight the following points. It struck me that Jesus did not make nine lepers who did not return to say thanks unwell, again for their lack of gratitude. He did not punish them for their ingratitude. Oh no, all of them remain cleansed. But he blessed the Samaritan. He said to him in Luke chapter 17, verse 19, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. All of them remain cleansed. But he blessed the Samaritan. Being grateful is therefore an act of faith. It is a deliberate act, a choice that we make. It also means being cleansed doesn't necessarily mean being well. If this cleansing of the leopards was a miracle, which made they who were once outcast acceptable to society again, the state of wellness was a special blessing he bestowed on the Samaritan. The other nine lepers were cleansed of their leprosy. In other words, their bodies were made clean, but they remained ungrateful in their minds. The grateful Samaritan was made well because wellness affects the body and the soul. It is much more than freedom from physical illness. It is, experts would tell you, an active process of change and growth. That was the blessing the grateful Samaritan received. And really, that is what gratitude does. It opens the doors for us to receive God's blessings. It makes what's, what was just an opportunity to be acceptable in the eyes of the world into a divine blessing that makes us acceptable in the eyes of the Lord. According to the American Catholic writer Thomas Merton, the grateful person knows that God is good, not by hearsay, but by experience. And that is what makes all the difference. That is what made the difference between the Samaritan and the other nine lepers. Brothers and sisters, fellow St. Martiners, there are, if I'm not mistaken, 86,400 seconds in a day. Do you think the least we can do is use one of those seconds 
that we enjoy as the gift of life to thank God. For each second we are allowed to take a breath is a blessing from above. And since we are reminded often to count our blessings, it means we receive 86 400 blessings a day, 86,400 blessings a day. Should we make those blessings count? The Roman philosopher Cicero said, gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues, but the parent of all others. This mother of all virtues, therefore, must be at the heart of our daily existence. I say this, because I am convinced that the spirit of gratitude determines the digit of our altitude. In other words, the more we give thanks with a grateful heart, the more abundance we will experience in our lives. For as the saying goes, it is not happy people that are thankful. It is thankful people who are happy. And we should be happy that the Atlantic hurricane season, which officially ended at the end of November, spared our beloved island, St. Martin, of the horrors of devastating storms like Matthew. That is why we are gathered here today. Because as someone noted, you can't be grateful and be depressed at the same time. Just a couple of days ago, some of us celebrated the U.S. Thanksgiving with a lot of merrymaking here on St. Martin. A casual visitor to the island may have thought that St. Martin had now become an overseas territory of the United States. While I see nothing wrong in joining other people in celebrating holidays important to them, this should, however, never be at the expense of our own. So therefore, let me use this opportunity to call on civil society and on cultural, on cultural workers, churches, and other NGOs to create activities that would make our Thanksgiving Day at least as meaningful to us as that of the United States. Finally, we are celebrating this 18th Thanksgiving service in front of our new government building. This is not because we do not respect the separation of church and state. We absolutely do. This could be considered a way of invoking God's blessings upon this new building and upon government itself since we haven't had an official opening as yet. On this Thanksgiving Day, we should remember the words of President John F. Kennedy, who in his Thanksgiving Day proclamation back in 1963 said, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. Therefore, let us all again end the way we started, or at least I started, by saying, thanks, thanks. We give you thanks for all you have done. We are so blessed. Our souls has found rest. Oh Lord, we give you thanks. Thanks, thanks, we give you thanks for all you have done. We are so blessed, our soul has found rest.
as I struggle along. They say I have nothing, but they are so wrong. In my heart, I'm rejoicing. How I wish they could see. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. There's a roof up above me. I've a good place to sleep. There's food on my table and shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord. And a fine family Thank you, Lord For your blessings on me Although I'm not wealthy And these clothes are not new I don't have much money But Lord, I and to me that all that's matter Though the world may not see and Thank you Lord For your blessings on me There's a roof up above me I've a good place to see There's food on my table and shoes on my feet You gave me your love, Lord And a fine family Thank you, Lord For your blessing on me You gave me your love, Lord And a fine family